Hello, you're on Music Toolbox. Today we'll be looking at Adobe Voice. Adobe Voice is a new storytelling app from Adobe and it is free, it is slick, it is polished, and it's a great fun product to use. If you have a quick story to tell, whether it's to your children or it's to your class, if you want to create a professional looking presentation but don't have a lot of time on the fly, this is really the app you want to use. So let's go ahead and dig into it. We're going to first create a new story. Now I can do whatever I want here, and this is just a title, so I'm going to call it Demo Story. and next and it gives you a, a, a series of structures that you can pick from or you can create your own and essentially what this is going to do is give you some prompts almost pedagogical prompts as to how to structure your story so in one slide it'll say overview and in the next slide it'll say example explanation tell them about something here it's really not necessary, but it's it's kind of helpful. It's kind of nice. So I'm just going to pick teach a lesson. And if you see at the bottom, overview. What will you teach and why is it interesting? Now, none of these show up in the actual slides. So whether or not you want to pay attention to that is up to you. And this is essentially how it works. You have a slide. On the slide, you, you have three options as to something that you can add. You can add an icon, a photo, or text. And you have several different layouts. So here I can have one picture. Here I can have two pictures. Here I can have a picture that fills almost the entire pane. Here I can have a photo with a caption. And here I can have a, almost a background image and uh, a smaller image inside. So these are my different options. And let's go ahead and do the two things. So I'm going to do the two things. So I've picked my double layout and let's go ahead and add a photo. So I have a series of places I can pull a photo from. If I have something on Facebook or in my Dropbox account that I like, I can go there. If I'm using Adobe's Creative Cloud, I can go to Adobe's Creative Cloud, access my account, and pull a Photoshop image that I've created, or something that I've taken a picture from on my iPad, or I could take a picture with my iPad. The last is a search. So let's search for guitar. Now this is not a Google image search. This is an image search that Adobe has prepared in advance as far as I understand, all of these images are under the Creative Commons, so we can grab them, use them, not use them. But let's go ahead and insert an image. And once I have the image in there, I can, by using the same technique as I zoom in and out of something on my iPad, I can scrunch my fingers up and down and I'm uh, to make it bigger or smaller and fill the frame. I'm deciding I'm really not so into that one. Let's grab this happy little guy here. And I want to see a little bit more. Let's let it finish loading first. And then maybe on this side, I want to add some text. I play guitar. That got really big. There we go. So that looks pretty good, but it's not, it's not arresting. Well, maybe the theme is wrong. So I can go up here and under themes, I have 32 different themes and each theme ha has its own entire identity. Um, so when I upload a photo into a theme, it will put a frame around that photo that is individual to that theme. It'll change the fonts. It'll change the motion between slides and the ultimate video it makes. Really, there's quite a lot going on. So if I hit Wanderer, for instance, it's going to completely change the look. I have a different font. I have different color palettes, different backgrounds. If you can see now underneath the frame, there is a bit of shadow. Each one of these will do something similar. So this is, it has geometric patterns kind of lightly laid underneath it. 
Lights is kind of, oh, I like lights. Lights puts a circular frame around the image and I can again drag and position that. So that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I can create another, another slide. Um, and let's look at the icons uh, tool. Now this is where I think this really shines because Adobe has created a phenomenal amount of icons that you can grab and pull in. Um, and they all work really well. So let's just grab one of these and okay, that looks good. So once I've created my slides and I'm happy with it and I did it pretty quickly, I can hold down the record button and then record my thoughts. So here I'm holding down the record button and it's grabbing my voice. So here I'm holding down the record button and it's grabbing my voice. Okay, so I didn't really like that. Hi, I play guitar. Hi, I play guitar. I think guitar is just super cool and amazing. I think guitar is just super cool and amazing. Okay, so that's great. And as you can hear, it kind of comes pre-installed with uh, different music. So there's actually quite a bit based on the mood they think you might want to create. Um, so let's try Western Sage. That's thoughtful. Hi, I play guitar. <laughs> okay, that's a little silly. I think guitar is just super cool and amazing. Okay, I've clearly been watching too much South Park. Um, but... What's nice about these music examples, uh, besides the fact that they're well recorded and free to use, is that they're designed to be looped. They're designed to vamp. So when you move slide to slide, the guitar track or the piano track or whatever it is that they've provided you with loops effortlessly for no matter how long your video goes. It fits just like it fit your image to a frame. Well, it fits it fits your slide to the music track. So where there are slight musical events, um, they there tend to be fairly minor arrival points throughout these tracks. They tend to coincide with arrival points visually in your slides, and it's actually really effective. And you know, though they provide many tracks, you might want to put something else, but I'd actually caution against that. I can upload here under my songs something from my iPad, but I can only put one song on. It's not like I can pick one song per slide. It's one song for the entire presentation, and if I don't know how long my presentation is going to be, well, that's an issue because I, I need to have some idea of how that song, how the song that I'm uploading is going to fade in or fade out. Or if I have musical examples that I want to present, well, then I have to kind of prepare those in advance and go, okay, I need a three minute audio track and at minute one and 15 seconds, I want, you know, this bit of music uh, of uh, Gregorian chant. And at this moment, I want this bit of organum. So you kind of have to prepare in advance and that can be kind of difficult. I think this app is actually better suited to simple stories, you know, maybe life stories, life of a good, a great composer, for instance. These, this is really suited to narrative structures. But that being said, it really lets you create something amazing quickly and efficiently and thoroughly. They've really thought about this app. And I, I, I must say that I really enjoy this app significantly. So once I'm ready, I can upload this app and I can send it as private or public. Um, and the reason they're asking you why to do that is essentially what you're doing now when you upload is you're sharing it. And you're sharing it to Adobe's new cloud-based space that they're trying to get everyone to use. And whether you share it on Facebook, email it, uh, share it on Twitter, it's all the same. Essentially what you're going to be doing is uploading it to Adobe's Creative Commons. I tend to hit copy link. Um, so I hit copy link, I upload it, it will give me the link. So let's go ahead and upload this quickly. 
Okay, so it's up there and the link to your video has been copied to your clipboard. I can hit done. And if I hop out here and open up a web browser, let's paste that in. So while they're preparing the amazingness that is the video that we've created here, at the bottom you can see I can share this, I can tweet this, but here's the important one, I can embed this. And I can take this embed code and I can go back to my LMS or my website and I can embed this into the HTML just in the same way as I embed a YouTube clip. Now as with YouTube, I'm always kind of wary of not owning the content myself. I mean, when I upload a video to uh, YouTube, I have that video, a file on my desktop. Uh, when I upload a video to Adobe Voice, well, I can't really pull the video out of Adobe Voice any other way than uploading it. So it's actually kind of, it's slightly different. And, and as a teacher, I prefer to know where my content is. I prefer not to lose my content. That being said, I'm always refreshing my content anyway. I think probably for now I'll use, use the Adobe service. Hi, I play guitar. I think guitar is just super cool and amazing. That's some powerful stuff.